you all for being here. We are here to discuss a few things. First, we are here to discuss and to show two body-worn camera videos relating to the death of Eddie Irizarry. These are videos that were body-worn cameras of the two officers who were directly involved. I will have a little more to say about that in a minute. We're going to show those videos. One is about 10 minutes, one is about 12 minutes. We will show the most relevant portions, but so that we are clear and consistent with the family's wishes, this press conference will not conclude until you have had the opportunity to watch all of it, all of each one. So while we, we will immediately play a shorter portion, the entirety will be made available to you today. For those of you who would like to obtain an electronic copy of these videos, you need to email our Chief of Communications, Jane Rowe, at jane.rowe at phila.gov. She will vet those requests and she will provide video. Once we have completed showing the most relevant portions of the video, we will then be discussing the charges that have been brought in this case. familiar with the fact that ex-police officer Mark Dial has turned himself in this morning to face the charges. We will go through those charges and then we will, consistent with our obligation to try this case in a courtroom, not in the media, we will be uh, hearing questions and we will be providing answers where we can. But I want to start discussing the videos. First of all, I need you to know that the family of Mr. Irizarry, as well as their counsel, were invited to our office for the purpose of reviewing these videos. They did review these videos. And we have very lengthy and detailed discussions about their wishes. While it was not their decision what we would do, we were careful to talk to them, to talk to them in detail, to talk to them after, at their request. They watched the entire videos, even to check in the next day to make sure that this was what they wanted to do. And what they said to us was that they wanted the videos played in their entirety. They wanted no portion of these videos blurred. When they came in and before they had seen the videos, which I had seen multiple times, as well as the attorneys behind me, whom I will introduce in a moment, I warned them repeatedly that this is extremely difficult to watch, that there is always some level of trauma, especially for family members associated with watching something that is extremely violent. Regardless of the warnings, they wanted to see it, which obviously we all understand and they saw it. I hope anyone who is considering looking at these videos in the public, I hope that any adult will think twice and think three times about allowing children to see these videos. And frankly, I hope any adult will think twice about watching these videos because in some ways and for some people, they will be traumatic. Nevertheless, even though it is our decision, after long and close consultation with the family, we have decided to follow their recommendation. I also want you to know that the family repeatedly said to me, and the family's counsel repeatedly said to me, they do not want any criminal unrest. They do not want any rioting. They do not want any looting. They do not want anyone to claim that what this video depicts or the nature of the case or the event itself justifies any criminal behavior, that that would be a violation of their respect, their love, and their reverence for young uh, Eddie Irizarry. They certainly can articulate it better than I can, but that is what they said. And I hope that anyone who sees this video and feels strongly about it 
will follow their heart when it comes to the lawful, peaceful exercise of free speech under our Constitution. <coughs> but I hope they will all also understand that free speech is not a license to commit any crimes. We will be playing both of these videos in their most relevant portions, and then at the conclusion of Q&A, we will play the remainder. We're not going to play them multiple times for you because you will have electronic access to the videos, and you will, those of you in the media, be able to look at them at your leisure so that you can complete your important and necessary reporting. They will be played in this order. First, we will be playing the body-worn camera of Officer Dial. Officer Dial was initially, as you know, the passenger in the police vehicle, and you will see some of that on the video. He eventually shot to death Mr. Irizarry. That will be video one. Video two is of uh, the man who was with him, the officer who was with him in the car that day, who was the driver and did not fire his gun. And that view will be more from the passenger side. Finally, before we show the video, I want to make sure that I introduce the individuals who are behind me because an incredible amount of work has gone into the careful decision making around release of the video and the charges in this case. We have with us Leandro Ritaco, who is the chief of the Special Investigations Unit. We have Karima Yelverton, and that's K A R I M A. Yelverton is Y E L V E R T O N, who is an assistant district attorney in the Special Investigations Unit assigned to this case. And we have Clark. Belgene, that's C-L-A-R-K-E, Belgene is B-E-L-J-E-A-N, who is an experienced and senior attorney within the Special Investigations Unit, who will also be working very closely on this case. Um, I'm going to ask that the lights be lowered for the purpose of showing video number one, and video number one is the body-worn camera of officer, well, then officer, Dial. For your information, the way the body-worn camera works is there's no sound initially and then the sound comes on. One of them is 10 minutes, the other is 12 in their entirety.
Chris, can you stop, please? Thank you. Uh, are you able to indicate what minute and second we have come to? Three minutes and 28 seconds. All right. Um, that is, in terms of the killing itself, the most relevant portion of the first video. It goes on for another several minutes. We will show those additional minutes. They include further footage of the police vehicle driving to the hospital and activity that occurs in the hospital uh, after that arrival. At this time, we're going to show the most relevant portion of the other body-worn camera video. This, of course, is the video of the officer who did not fire his weapon and who was the driver of the car.
Chris, can you stop it, please, and tell us what minute and second we have come to? 529. 529. Second video is 9 minutes and 44 seconds. We're at 5 minutes and 29 seconds. The first video is approximately 12 minutes. As I said, we will show in their entirety the rest of those videos at the uh, conclusion of the main portion of this press conference. Today we will be talking about the charging documents. Those documents represent allegations. This defendant, like every other criminal defendant, is presumed innocent. And the charges are murder, voluntary manslaughter, aggravated assault, simple assault, reckless endangering of another person, and official oppression. As I said before, Mark Dial is presumed innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. We intend to try this case in a court of law, not in the media, and therefore our responses to questions will be limited. But I will say this. These body-worn cameras, these body-worn camera videos will be introduced into evidence, most likely at both the preliminary hearing and at trial. They are crucial evidence in the case, and in many ways they speak for themselves. Are there any questions at this time? Mr. Cole, these videos speak for themselves. The law and the jury instructions in Pennsylvania, the definitions of these offenses are supported by this and other evidence. And that is why we have charged ex-officer Dial with these charges. Yes, please. So uh, if I may, I'll try to address part two of your question first. Those cases are actively under investigation. We have spent considerable time on both, and we will be coming to conclusions on both of those cases in the relatively near future, uh, most likely first on the FBI matter, and most likely second on the matter involving the state trooper. I, uh, we are not in a position to say they're different. I think that that is a conclusion that can't be drawn at this time. Obviously, all three of those factual scenarios are different. But as we come to our determination in those cases, we will be more specific about the bases for those determinations. The video does contain audio. Um, I understand that you have not had the benefit of seeing and listening to these videos repeatedly, as I have and as all the attorneys behind me have. Uh, but consistent with the family's request, we will make that electronically available to you. And I would encourage you to play it as many times as you need to play it. Listen to it as carefully as you want to listen to it. And 
As I said, I'm not going to try this case in the press, but I think it will become clear once you have a chance to do that. Mr. President, can you know the second name of the, another police involved in this case? The other officer in this matter is not charged at this time. Um, and in my opinion, it's unnecessary to put his name out at this time. Yes, I can. Um, estamos aquí para discutir los cargos, en este caso, en contra del policía, ex policía, Mark Dial, quien mató al joven Danny Irizarri. Hoy día estamos demostrando, demostrando los videos que hay en el caso, además de eso, uh, estamos aquí para anunciar los cargos en el caso, en, y esos cargos incluyen homicidio, además de otros cargos. Sorry. Yes, sir. I think we are realistic enough to know that we can't read the minds of people in the public uh, when it comes to the activity of other entities or city agencies. But what we can do is try to control our own decision making and our own actions in ways that increase the public trust. And we believe that our decisions in this case represent something we've been trying to do for a long time. We have been trying to be fair, fair to everyone. We have been trying to make it very clear that justice is even-handed. It is even-handed if you are powerful or not powerful, rich or not rich, famous or not famous, an insider or an outsider. And it is my hope that as we try to be fair in this case, as we do with all other cases, that the public will understand that they can trust that the district attorney's office is trying to be fair. Uh, if I may, I'll be happy to answer that, uh, but I do want to try to make sure everybody gets a question. The, the answer is that bail has not been set yet. There will be a preliminary arraignment uh, coming up probably within several hours. Larry, that, uh, that second officer's video, his audio doesn't really kick in until after the shooting has happened. Is there any way to recover that audio? Have you heard what was said from that officer when he pulled up on scene? But what, I can, what I can say to you on that point is that the way body-worn camera works in Philadelphia, consistent, among other things, with Pennsylvania law, is that the earliest sound is not immediately available. Um, I will try to answer your question on whether there's any way to recover it. If you just give me a second, I'll step back. To the best of our knowledge, the answer is no. This is a product of the Axon Corporation in the event you want to follow up with them. But our understanding is that while the video is passively recording over a period of time, the audio is not passively recording. The audio activates after the police officer manually activates the body-worn camera. 
So on the one hand, it is going to preserve video that has already been passively recorded and mark it to make it available. On the other hand, the sound is off and the, the microphone only is activated after there's a manual activation of the body-worn camera. But there is other video, and I'm sure you've reviewed it because uh, Attorney Johnson and his family have, have released that video, and you do hear the partner shouting the former officer dial. Have you reviewed that, and does that video play a part in your charging decision? We have reviewed a lot of other evidence, including the video to which you refer, and all of it has played a part in our charging decision. In that video, do you hear the partner say he has a gun? Do you think that's something you hear? Once again, I don't want to try this uh, case in the court of public opinion, nor do I want uh, some kind of a spurious argument that somehow the case has to be tried somewhere else because of something we said. I think that the videos speak for themselves, and I trust that the media will carefully scrutinize them and not, come to their own opinions. Mr. Crescent, do you hear tonight? I trust that you will all be able to hear the video and form your own opinions, as will as will the jury. Larry, with all due respect, we just watched the video, and we're trying to be clear so we can be as clear as possible in public opinion. Uh, I didn't hear tonight more than I've heard. This is the first time we've seen it. You've seen the video over and over. Do you hear tonight or not from the public? I understand you want me to comment on that. I'm not trying to put you off, but we have a case to try, and we intend to try it in the courtroom. We are not going to we are not going to enable uh, the defense in this case, regardless of what creative writing they may engage in outside of court. We are not going to be lured in to giving them the opportunity to file a spurious motion that somehow it has to be tried somewhere else. Ex Officer Dial will be facing a Philadelphia jury, and they will be making that determination. Sí, I'm sorry, I, I missed the first part of that. In, in Spanish, for yeah. the prejudicial, for 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 the prejudicial, Asalto agravado, asalto simple, uh, opresión oficial y poner en peligro a otra persona. Um, I need to check. I know that when we were reviewing this recently, we did not yet have a full autopsy report. So if you allow me one second to check. At this time, we only have a preliminary autopsy. We do not have a final, and therefore, we uh, will not be answering that question more fully until we see the final and autopsy. Who charged him with murder, which includes the first degree, which is intentional Once again, we're going to try this in a courtroom, but there is no question in my mind that the affidavit of probable cause. Uh, the evidence delineated in there, uh, which was confirmed by a judge of the Court of Common Pleas who signed off on these charges, support all the charges we have brought, including a charge of first-degree murder, that the jury instructions support it, that the law supports it. Um, and frankly, in my opinion, it's not even really a discussion that we have in other cases that do not involve a defendant of this category. Uh, I don't think we're saying anything more than the obvious when we say that firing six consecutive charges at close range at a vital part of the body of a person under the law is strongly supportive together with other evidence 
of all of these charges. Why, why should the public, Mr. President, have any confidence in your office's ability to assess, successfully prosecute this case in light of your office's monumental failures and misconduct in dealing with other police officer arrests and prosecutions? I'm sure you remember the Ryan Connolly case where the Supreme Court Justice, Justice Dougherty accused you of abusing the grand jury process, where you said, quote, tainted, unquote, grand jury presentment. You said, quote, your office was driven by a win-at-all cost culture, quote, that treats police officers differently than other criminal defendants. And, Ju and Judge McDermott agreed, tossing out your uh, uh, grand jury presentment, saying it was, quote, riddled with errors and, quote, no good, and she dropped all the charges against Tom. Um, so why should the uh, public have any confidence in your ability to successfully prosecute? I think the public knows what this office stands for. I think they have seen our successes and not our temporary challenges. Um, but I encourage you, Mr. Cipriano, to ask the public. Are there any other questions? Mr. President, there's been a lot of back and forth between what happened here, what the officer said. You know, we've heard from Mr. Al-Bawley, who has announced she is stepping down. We've heard from the family. This is the first time we're hearing from you. Is that back and forth? It's important that we bring the evidence. It's important that we bring into a court the evidence and argue from it what the facts are and how the law applies to those facts. What we are doing here today, consistent with the very specific wishes of the family of Mr. Irizarry, is we are bringing the evidence. We are bringing a close-up view of what occurred at that time so that the public can make their own assessment of it and so that on an important issue that the public has followed closely, they can have more facts and fewer words. Yeah, you mentioned Makata was brought up. Have you decided not to bring those charges? Do you have any interest in it? Just not to charges? We intend to continue to prosecute Officer Pamela. Does the origin of that original first false narrative come out in this body worn camera video? Very interesting question. Um, well, I will say this we are going to show the rest of the videos in their entirety. If you have the time, I hope you will hang in there. And I, I will respectfully suggest that maybe you can draw your own conclusions there. Obviously, in a quickly developing situation like this, um, there are times when there is also verbal communication behind the scenes. But I will tell you this, I have no specific knowledge of how it is that the first version to come from PPD originated. So it's your view that when he gets out of the car, what is it your view that when Dial gets out of the car, his intent is to kill the car? We are not going to comment further on that, uh, although that sort of theory is in no way required by the law in order to support these charges. Mr. President, as someone who has prosecuted officers before and seen a lot of body camera footage, can you comment on what stood out to you about this specific footage? I think the most important thing that I can say to the public about what stood out to me is think twice about watching it. This is extremely difficult video to watch, and I watch a lot of very difficult video. Are there any other questions? There is some description, and this came from, I think, Attorney Johnson, that his client is holding a knife, and that he could see it on the body cam video when he watched it and showed it. Do you see that? Um, I, uh, I believe that when you have a chance to review it in more detail, you'll know exactly what Mr. Johnson is talking about. Um, and I believe you will be able to make observations to make your own determination on it. Can you release the affidavit? Public documents. Public documents. Charge sheet. One second, please.
SIU Chief Landry Ritako is leaving, but she is leaving because the, and so is ADA Karima Yelverton because the arraignment appears to be occurring soon. The short answer is not at this time, but there will be a time when we can do that. Could you call the police department one more time just to say a little more slowly? Yeah. Yes. Murder. Is that for me? It's murder generally, which includes voluntary manslaughter, aggravated assault, simple assault, reckless and Simple assault, reckless endangerment of another person, and official oppression. Are there any other questions? If not, we will. Um, Um, obviously, we're talking about arrests in general. No, no, for crime. Oh, for, for crime. Okay. Homicide. Understood, Mr. Dean. All right. So uh, the question, as I understand it, then, is what do I have to say about the fact that this office has been involved in the arrests of four police officers who killed someone while on duty? What I have to say is that. Justice must be even-handed. One of those cases was a case against former Officer Ruck. He was convicted of homicide. And when he was, as best we can tell, that was the first conviction of a Philadelphia police officer killing someone in the line of duty in the history of the city of Philadelphia. Um, other cases are still underway. They're still in progress in various different ways. What is maybe not as obvious to the public, but needs to be known, is that part of what we are required to do is we are required to go to the scene of any officer-involved shooting, whether it's fatal or not fatal. We are required to participate in an independent investigation. We do these investigations all the time. And the universe of what has occurred here is not the four that we have brought. The universe of what has occurred includes many, many, many others that we have investigated where we have determined that there was no crime. And so we did not bring charges. Um, we try our very best to be fair and to be even handed, but we will not cover up for power. We will not cover up for insiderism and we will not cover up for politics as was in fact the practice of previous chief prosecutors in the city of Philadelphia for decades. No, sir. This is all evidence that is going to be played in court. It is routine uh, in Philadelphia and nationally on an issue that engenders this level of public interest to be transparent and to let people see what happened on a sunny street in Philadelphia in a public place and what was done by law enforcement officers who work for the taxpayer. And that is what we have done. One of the most important things that we have to do in a scenario like this is we have to sit down with the family. We have to do it at a time when they are available and they're ready to review it. And we have to talk in depth, as we did in the Walter Wallace case, as we have done here with them, about what it is they do and do not want exposed to the public. Uh, many survivors of this kind of a homicide feel differently. They may want to show only part of the video. They may want part of the video blurred out. But we would not be acting with full input from survivors and victims in situations like this unless we heard their thoughts. This is, after all, a video. 
of the dying moments of a young man. And the parents may feel differently than how I feel. So we have to consider that. What often happens to a family who have lost a loved one is they're immediately traumatized in grief, arranging for a funeral and carrying out that funeral, which is what happened here. We met with them very shortly after that funeral. This is also a situation in which the family had retained counsel, and it would be unethical for us to go around counsel. Families that retain counsel generally want counsel to be present. So our communications with the family had to be through their attorneys, and our communications with those attorneys began long before the family actually sat down with us and reviewed these videos. We were on the phone with their counsel uh, for a few hours, well in advance of the time when the family accepted our invitation to come in and sat down with us. It was simply put, it was necessary out of respect for the family, their loss, and Eddie Irizarry. It was necessary to hear what they had to say when they were able to do it, and when we knew enough uh, and had enough information from PPD to be able to carry that out. Are there any? I'm sorry. Yes, sir, Mr. Cole. The murder one charge, the intentional murder charge, is based on the six shots. The charge of murder generally, which is a charge that essentially um, makes available all five levels of homicide, uh, the one that clearly does not apply here is second degree murder, but that charge of murder generally. Uh, includes first degree, third degree, voluntary manslaughter, and involuntary manslaughter. The reason that we have brought these charges is that they are supported by the evidence and by the law, in our opinion. It is not that simple, and I, I don't say that in any way to try to be demeaning, but it is not that straightforward. One of the aspects of our homicide statutes, which have literally been developed over hundreds of years, is that there is some breadth to them, and then and there is some interpretation to them, uh, and all of that is part of what goes into making a determination whether or not there is probable cause. We have a case here where we have brought these charges because we believe there is probable cause. Uh, that has been confirmed in the sense that it has been signed off upon by a judge of the Court of Common Pleas, uh, and I can tell you that based on my what is it now, almost 36 years uh, of being in criminal court and my long familiarity with the law around this, the jury instructions around it, and my deep familiarity not only with his videos but with other evidence that we are confident that it, there's probable cause for all of these charges. Can you explain why you didn't have the jury? I, can, I cannot answer the question of whether or not we did. At this time, we have only a preliminary autopsy report. We don't have a final. Um, we will be able to answer that more fully when we have a final. But at this point, I can't answer that question. Is his partner talking as part of your investigation? This is an ongoing investigation. It would be inappropriate for me to answer that question, not only because it may or may not implicate laws that prevent me from doing it, but also because this investigation is not concluded. All right. Thank you for, for those questions. At this time, we are going to play the remainder of these videos. If it is of help to you, we can play them from beginning to end, starting with the approximately 12-minute dial video and concluding with the second one. If you would prefer, we'll simply play the remaining portions. Is there any preference? Full. Okay. Um, let's go back to the beginning on the first video, please, and then we will start from the beginning on the second video. Can, is someone able to lower the lights? Thank you.
I swear to God, I'm going to give you a uh, PA tag. We'll be back on 5573. Seize your consistent in this vehicle. And a little bit of a sigh over here.
make the work and start taking off again. Uh, can you came down on the street, this is you. I'm trying to come over here. I said, the exit's going to that anything. As soon as I make this left, this is the wrong way. I see a car here. I see a car going. After you pop up, we got out. Dude, so you can pull out a knife. Thank you. 